Hi, everybody, and welcome to a live Howard's online oboe recital. Um, there's so many things very special about this recital. Firstly, uh, this is Ensemble Verama's first event of this year. Kind of sad, I know, but this is the, the, the reality of 2020, unfortunately. Secondly, it's a solo oboe recital. Like, when was the last time you've seen something like that, right? And thirdly, this, this recital is called Alive. And all of the featured composers today are alive. So uh, he here I have with me Howard, and he's going to tell us a little about this recital. Hi, Howard. Hi, Bernice. Thank you so much for hosting Hi. today's show. Um, today's You're recital welcome. is a strange one. I think we can, we can all acknowledge that it's strange. Firstly, you don't see my oboe with me, and I'm really glad that I don't have my oboe with me at the moment. Um, yeah. Everything you are going to hear today is pre-recorded. Um, in fact, uh, as of yesterday, I was still recording for today's performance. The idea of yeah. doing this recital came, uh, I mean, it's, it's now a story that has been repeated a hundred times. Uh, we are not able to perform as musicians. And I still wanted to be productive musically. And so... Uh, one thing led to another and the only way to really produce music during this time is to play alone. Um, of course, you can do all, all these digital collaborations that we've been seeing around a lot, um, but I really wanted to play in a very authentic and sincere way and to really yeah. do that um, truthfully was to play alone. So so that's how this and this is. Up. And, and this is one other thing that's so special about this uh, recital is that you're going to be playing no less than three instruments. So very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So for the first piece that we're going to hear uh, is by Yi Ka Ho. And we have uh, we have him with with us today. What a what what a honor it is that he he will join us. Uh, we're going to hear his piece called uh, Echoes for Solo Oboe. So let's uh, let's let's welcome Kaho to this live stream. Hello, Hi, Bernice. Kaho. Hello, Hi, work. Hi. Hi, Kaho. Hi. Uh, good to nice see you. Nice to have you here with us. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. my pleasure. Cool. So let's talk a little bit about this piece, Echoes. Um, yeah, so what I understand is that Howard actually actually commissioned this piece uh, from you. Yeah, yes. Yeah, and, uh, in uh, 2016, I attended a performance of Oyan Cricket Day, which is one of the most uh, famous and active Oyan Cricket Day in Kedad. And uh, is this is a a get that name is Wayang Grit uh, Sri Asung and lit by the Dalam Majid. This is in, in the May, but uh, after uh, two months later in July, but Maji is a pass away, and I was so shocked because I in, in May I enjoyed very much uh, on the stage. When they perform at so the one cricket date, I sit on the stage and I join them. Uh, uh, it's an audience, but I sit at the back behind the screen. And uh, at the time, I was so happy to uh, attempt uh, the one get date, get date performing lively because uh, we we know about Oyang Grit Klantan. Uh, it is most popular is compared to Oyang Grit Get Date. But unfortunately, it's the last group of Oyang Grit Get Date. It's led by the uh, Bart Matis, and it's since the Bart Matis passed away, and then I think it's probably is this is the last performance of the Wayang Grisa Sri Asuns. So, uh, how work is asking a piece from me, and I I I thought to uh, how was saying uh, I would like to do something uh, in memory, maybe something is called of the Bart. Uh, Majid, and then since the oboe and the 
Sorunai is pretty much the same of the sounds. Is is it also also a double rich instruments? But sometimes people call it Sorunai is is a contrabass rich instruments. So how would say okay? Then I I I start to compose the piece and some elements is I still using the elements from the as as uh, date, but I try not to copy exactly the same. So. In the middle of the piece, I uh, I discuss with uh, Howard. Why don't we use the originals of performance by Orion Then uh, uh, Howard will start a uh, solo performance first. Then at the middle, uh, it, it is a music play by the background. It, it is a, a performance and recording by Orion Orion Quintet, led by Bak Majid. And at the end, Howard is still coming back. And then with uh, more improvisation at the last sections. So this is how, uh, all about my piece for encores. So were you a good were you good friends with Park Majid? Did you know I, him? I I met him uh, twice, and uh, it's not really uh, know very well, but uh, I know him because uh, we we have. Sharing the same uh, stage we perform on the one festivals, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. Where did you get this footage of the Wayang Kulit Gedek from? Again, sorry. Where did you get the footage of the the video the, the, of the this recording, Wayang Kulit the, from? The recording that oh, you used. The video, I don't know. <laughs> video is I, I think. Yeah. Uh, the recording is I, I record some music, but uh, I also buy some albums uh, because I want to get that from the uh, back matches. Uh, they have a series of recordings or, or CD albums coming. Uh, so I, I, I bought some uh, albums and then I use some part of the music in, in the albums. Yeah. So this particular recording was by Park Majid then? And the Sari yeah. Asun, uh, yeah, Wayang Kulit. Okay. Yeah, wow. yeah. Cool. All yeah. right. So, and and this piece, this uh, echoes it uh, for solo oboe was um, premiered. Uh, would Would you like to say something about that, Howard? Or yeah. yeah, sure thing. So uh, today's performance, you will see a sort of video representation of a recording that we made in 2017 the the performance was was done back then and there was no video recording of that performance unfortunately so i thought um how do we then present this today it, it would be not so interesting if we only heard the music so i wanted to create some sort of visual presentation so i took some footage of uh this uh, from the archives of uh, this Wayang Kulit group um, and I patched together the sound recording, the actual live recording together with some footage of this Wayang Kulit performance in the hopes that you could see the connection and not just hear the connection. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here we have it, a very Malaysian piece. Uh, uh, inspired by the Malaysian art of Wayang Kulit, Echoes for Solo Oboe by Yi Ka Ho. <laughs>
Inilah memang kami atas kayangan Seorang takut geruda Yang selalu menolong kepada manusia yang lemah Kepada siapa yang lemah perlu kami tolong Tetap kami tolong Biarlah kami turun di atas dengan lautan dengan segera Ini seorang geruda turun di atas dengan segera Memberikan bantuan You just heard, you just heard Ikaho's echoes for solo oboe. Thank you so much, Kaho, for um, your music, for a bit of the, uh, some echoes of this past art form. And you just also saw um, some snapshots of the Wayang Kulit Gedek by Pak Majid. Um, and Pak Majid, passed away in July 2016, and this footage came from, I believe, May 2016 in Kada. So what a what what a honor it is to be able to 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 see this and experience this with uh, Howard's amazing oboe playing that's uh, inspired by the ceruling. Um, for all of you guys who just joined us, uh, this is a live. Um, Howard's solo oboe recital. The next up is Carolyn Morris, The Secrets of Trees. So Howard, let's talk a little bit about this and about this, uh, this recent oboe competition that you just won. Well, I, 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 I got the third prize, so, <laughs> so I wouldn't say I won the competition, but I did get something out of well, it. Well, you, you won the third prize. <laughs> I guess. Well, yeah, uh, Secret of Trees by Carolyn Morris. Carolyn Morris is an Australian composer and yep. she was commissioned to write a set piece for the Australasian Double Read Society competition, online competition, which was again, another thing that was purely a reaction to the, the pandemic. I think traditionally they did the competition live. Um, but as a result of turning it into an online competition, they opened it internationally, which is why, uh, I, which was why I was able to to participate. And so, Carolyn's piece uh, was a set piece. It's very difficult. Um, I believe when I I registered when I received the music, there was no program attached to it. Um, so I was really learning the piece sort of having to imagine what the piece was about. Uh, it has a very literal title, uh, as, as with a lot of composers who write programmatic music. It's called Secret of Trees. She, she never explained it, but um, two weeks ago, I wrote an email to her to, to let her know, um, actually asked for the rights to play the piece in today's live stream. 
and she was she said, "Oh, it's it's still cl so close to the the competition, so you don't have to pay me." She was very generous, and she said, "Okay, nice. I'll, I'll write a few words uh, about the piece for you." And apparently, um, it is not only a reaction to the, the the current climate. We know, of course, that several months ago there was a huge. Uh, this was not several months. This was, I, I think, a year. The ago, beginning but, of the year, but, right? Yes, but the entire incident of the bushfires, the crazy bushfires mm -hmm. in Australia that that lasted for months, and yeah. so the piece was really inspired by that, which is why uh, trees are mentioned, and uh, mm -hmm. it's a very positive reaction uh, to what could come out from tragedy and and disasters. So yeah, yes. so I, I hope that in my performance uh, we'll be able to hear a little bit of this. Yeah. Yeah. So this piece was written actually for the competition, right? Yes. So so how long did did you have to learn this piece? I believe um, I don't uh, I don't have a very precise memory of this, but it probably took me two months to learn the notes and then I went into the recording studio for this. Yeah. All right. Okay. So here we have it. Um, Carolyn Morris, The Secrets of Trees. Bye. 
we just heard The Secrets of Trees by Carolyn Morris, a beautiful piece uh, that was written uh, as an, a reaction to Australia's catastrophic bushfires of this year and also written for the 2020 Australasian double read competition that Howard won the third prize for just not so very long ago. Uh, so next up is Chao Jun Yi's Wings of Hope for English Horn. And we have with us uh, Jun Yi, who will call in all the way from New York. Hi, Jun Yi. Hello, hello everybody. Hello, hello. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Hi, Jun Yi. Morning. Thank you for having me here, Bernice. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks. Um, let's talk a little bit of your piece, Wings of Hope. Uh, let's hear this this fantastic story. Oh, yeah, sure. So as you know, this year we are having this big pandemic around. So during this period, I have a very simple inspiration, uh, motivation that I wish to work is like I wish to write a lot of miniatures for solo instruments. Uh, not only to one of the main reason is really to reconnect with friends that I have been working with around the world, and also another is also a good exercise for me to really relearn of all these instruments. So this piece, particular piece, Wings of Hope, um, as you as as you asked before, this is like there isn't many solo for English horn, and no. funnily, it's like. Recently, one of my one of a friend and both of you know who he is, uh, Hao Kim, Yong Hao Kim. He did post some solo excerpt playing English horn. I'm like, man, this sounds so beautiful. I really want to just do something with it. And also, Hao Kim was the one of the uh, earliest uh, like person that I worked with in early stage. Like the last time I worked with him is like to back in 2008 like HSBC Composer Workshop in KL. Since then, we never really continued to work with him. And I did ask him whether if he is interested to play, if I write something, if he is interested to try it out. Then later on, the funny story next is where I was doing some live stream back in the time of my work in progress and Howard pop up. Hey, boss, something, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, this range doesn't work out. Lah. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and like after I finished the piece, I sent it to Hawkin, and also I said, and I did also t um, contact Howard whether if he's interested to try it out. And later on, this how this is where we are right now. Uh, and to put simple simply about the piece itself, it's a rather, I would say it's a piece. I you don't hear many aesthetic techniques. Uh, it's a very contrasting piece compared to Kaho's uh, Mr. E's piece. And in this piece, I'm more like kind of exploring my own music language, harmonic language, uh, as well as emotion wise. So it's more lyrical, mel melancholy. And I think that it's not an easy piece to play with. Maybe Howard can tell us more about that part. Yeah, for, for sure. Um... Playing the English horn in the first place is already something uh, a little bit strange for me because it's akin to, say, if you're a violinist and you're asked to play the viola, it you, you can't just do it, of course. It, they're, they're completely different instruments. But somehow there's this uh, perception that if you play the oboe, you must know how to play the English horn. So I struggled a little bit. I bought an English horn uh, more than a year ago, but up to that point, I've never owned an English horn in my life. So prior to that, I would have played the English horn maybe once every four years or five years. I, I would loan it from someone if I needed to do a gig or something with the English horn. So it was nice to have a piece for English horn that I could use to, to practice and, and get back into shape playing the English horn. The last time I played so much English horn was probably back when I was in the conservatory, when I was still studying. In, I'm now in Singapore, but I used to study here as well more than 10 years ago. And... The interesting thing is that, of course, the piece was inspired by uh, Hao Kin, and Hao Kin is my first oboe teacher. So it comes. And can from you say that Hao Kin? 
can we say that Haukin is like the father of Malaysian oboe playing? Uh, I would I would say that he is truly uh, a Malaysian pioneer. There's no doubt about yeah. it. Of course, we have had uh, other oboe players as well. They 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 were they were of course, but yeah. I think Haukin was really one of the first to really carve a way as a professional oboe player. I mean, he to, yeah. to this day, he, he still holds a position as a principal oboe with the RTM Orchestra. And of course, yeah. this is something that's un unprecedented. I mean, ten, 10 or 15 years ago, you wouldn't imagine anyone playing the oboe professionally. But now we have so yeah. many in Malaysia. So, so Haukin yeah. really is, yeah, he's his pioneer. Yeah. Plus, Haukin makes reads for everyone. Yes. And he and he taught everyone. Yes. Well, Malaysian. Yeah, basically. So in a way it's yeah. appropriate it's it's sort of appropriate that he was the um the one who first premiered this piece. In That's a way. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um uh, Junie, you said that this uh, this was an opportunity for you to work with your old friends. So uh, have you worked a lot with uh, with Howard? My only experience working with Howard is actually back in 2010 uh, at the MPYO. Okay. And That's a long time ago. Yeah. Yes, I I agree, and I did write something crazy back in the time. Right. And so you would call that, this not it, so crazy. This is in a crazy, in a different way. I would say, I'm also it's, I'm it's always for, crazy. It's, it's for English. It's for English horn solo. Like that's crazy already. <laughs> well, well, for me as a composer, it's always interesting just to write for an instrument that fit to the instrument itself and features in themselves as who they are. And that is the job for a composer, really to understand the instruments and as also, if possible, the player. Because you want the player to also have space to feature themselves, who they are as a player, as a performer, as an artist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the other thing yeah. is also it's uh, written for English horn solo, and I'm wondering if this is the first ever piece written for that by a Malaysian composer, possibly, right? As far as I'm yeah. aware, and of course, I don't claim that my knowledge is comprehensive. Of course, it's not. <laughs> um, but I have not encountered this. But there are many. Uh, pieces for oboe solo, particularly from Kaho. And, and this is why yeah. I know Kaho very well, because he has uh, a large body of works for oboe. He, I, I think he has a, mm -hmm. a strong affinity. He has a very strong understanding of the instrument. Um, but not to bring anything away from our con conversation about Junyi's piece, um, but definitely... Uh, it's not common to see a Malaysian composer write something for the English horn. Yeah. <laughs> or, or oboe, apart from Kaho. Yes. Uh, so, um, Juni, this piece is called Wings of Hope. So, what were or what are you hoping for? And what's the wings? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Like some sometimes you uh just a joke, but sometimes it's like we wrote the music first and then we find a title that fits the feelings. Yeah. Um yeah. but at the same time it is also uh in the piece itself, it is actually kind of like finding the direction to move forward. I think that is a feeling of trying to embrace what is happening, uh trying to conquer the obstacle. And trying to really move, uh, find ways to uh, to really understand who you are and moving forward uh, bravely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and especially this is has such a special special story about like that you were writing this, uh, you were right live streaming your your composition process on Facebook and, and during this time of coronavirus and to hope for progress and moving forward. 
Yeah. So I think thank that you. Is a Thanks. good way to put it. Thank you, Bernice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So thank you so much, Junyi, for uh, joining us all the way from New York. Um, so here we will listen to and we will watch Howard play Chao Junyi's Wings of Hope for English Horn Solo. We just heard Wings of Hope for Solo English Horn by Chao Jun Yi. Uh, for those of you who just joined us, this is a live Howard's solo oboe recital. Next up is Gilles Silvestrini's Ali Mundi. Howard, let's uh, talk a little bit about what this piece is. So, um, Ali Mundi is Latin. And the the literal translation is other worlds. Yeah. And uh, as far as I understand, based on the, the program notes that the composer has, has provided, actually the, the composer didn't provide the program notes, but there is a very yeah. substantial, if you would like to find out more, there's a very substantial article by Yuri Valentin, who is this excellent, super young oboe player who has recently won a lot of awards in Germany. He made a recording yeah. of the piece, and this was when I first found out about it. Mm -hmm. Silvestrini is no stranger to oboe players because everyone plays the six etudes by Silvestrini. He, he wrote this set of 
at least 20 years ago, and, and they're very popular, they're very difficult. And Ali Mundi comes from a different set of etudes right. that he made several years ago. Yeah, called the etude pittoresque or something That's right. like that. That's right. right, which are all very prog programmatic. And Ali Mundi, I 2013. think... 2013. Yes, 2013. Uh, Ali Mundi is probably uh, an expression of the Far East. Um, in his own words, he described the composition as trying to uh, describe sounds from another world, which I feel is simply trying to describe a language that, as a Western person, you might not be familiar with. For example, sounds of an Armenian duduk or a suona, mm. or any, in fact, any of the, the Eastern wind instruments or that, that musical language in particular, the very modal sort of uh, a, a way of writing. And, and he took from that inspiration and really churned out something very special. This is by far one of my favorite pieces that I've ever uh, forced myself to learn. And it was enjoyable throughout. It was so brilliantly composed. Can, can you tell us a little bit about the advanced techniques that's, that is needed for this piece? The advanced techniques. Now, I believe Suez Srini himself played the oboe. Maybe he still does, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. But he has this very keen sense of awareness. And because he wanted to convey this sort of non-Western sound world, he used uh, microtones and, and what microtones to, to explain simply is, for example, if you have a, a major scale and you go do, re, mi, and then you can make it chromatic, of course. So you can have do, do, re, re, mi. And of course, there are more notes in between that, but we don't use that so much in Western compositions unless you write extended techniques. But here, he embraced the notes in between, and there are less than five or six notes in the entire four-minute piece that are not microtones. So that's very special. Wow. Yeah. 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 Um, would you call, like, how is this different from what you had to do for, for example, Kaho's piece? For Kaho's piece, uh, there is a very... There is a, a canvas that consists of very uh, widely acceptable uh, conservative language. So you don't see so much microtones. But what he does is that he introduces a lot of ornamentation to the music. So you still feel like you're playing a line, but you have to do all these strange things uh, to, to bring out a sort of a flavor of what perhaps could be Malaysian music, at least Wayang yeah. Kulit music, Wayang Kulit, uh, yeah. Gadek music. But here, it isn't like that at all. Here, it is someone who imagines what could be Eastern, and yeah. it, it doesn't represent any country. Uh, it is just a representation of, uh, in, in the 13th and 14th centuries, if you took the Silk Road and you, you walk all the way, 2,000 kilometers from Europe, they, they had this assumption that that was the end of the world, that was the edge of the world. So yeah. here is uh, an auditory representation of what that could be. Was Kaho's piece also microtonal? Would you say that? Absolutely not. It's, it's, it's actually very tonal. It's very tonal, yeah. although not in the traditional sense. It's more modal. It's less tonal. Yeah. It, it definitely right. doesn't rely on a home key. And here in the Silvestrini, it, it doesn't do that as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to read a little bit from the uh, program notes from, from this, this CD that you, you talked about. Um, it says this, the music describes a captivating scene in the distant Orient, an Orient of dreams, portraying an improvisation on an exotic wind instrument. The piece creates the ambience of the vast lonely steppe. So uh, 
yeah, I, I, I guess improvisation is a, a, a big uh, feature of this piece, as with also uh, Juni's piece, as with also, I would say, Kaho's piece, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we will hear now uh, Gilles Silvestrini, Ali Mundi. You just heard Ali Mundi from the Etude Pittoresque by Gilles Silvestrini. Now we are at the end of this uh, recital, Alive by Howard Ng. And um, if you were here at the beginning with us, you might remember that I mentioned that we will see Howard play no less than three instruments. And so far, we've seen two instruments, the oboe and the English horn. So we get to this last piece uh, of this recital by Louis Andriessen called Forget Me Not. And Howard, what is this piece? Why are there three instruments in this recital? The Andriessen is very interesting. Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite pieces as well. That from the oboe repertoire and and this is not standard repertoire i i think it's it's pretty apparent at, at this point that nothing from today's program is standard and uh, 
very special. And yes, and and forget me not is a particularly special one because it's written for、uh, one instrumentalist for an oboe player, but you have to play the oboe with your left hand, and you have to play the piano with your right hand. Wow! And Andresen is, of course, well known. He's, he's a big composer. He's Dutch. He's still alive, and and apparently still writing very actively. And Andresen、um, is known for writing these massive minimalist pieces, so huge, like ensembles with、that's, huge percussion sections. That's a, and, that's such an oxymoron. Massive minimalist. Yes. You you could write very loudly but very minimally. You know what I mean? It's、uh, dynamic is is、uh, and、uh, um, being generous with dynamic doesn't doesn't mean that you're minimalist. Of course, I, I think the the idea of writing minimally、uh, is that you you develop ideas very carefully using very little material and producing some sort of emotional effect from it. And here, I think this was written around 1970, and Forget Me Not maybe was a result of the composer wanting to write、uh, something smaller. I understand it came from a collection of、uh, music called The Memory of Roses, and they were all、mm. miniatures. The idea is actually very similar to what Jun Yi now mentions as him trying to work with his friends.、Uh, Andresen was doing the same, so he wrote. Uh, these small pieces, tiny pieces, two or three minutes, meant for one player, and oftentimes they have to do other things. So, for example, there's another piece for solo violinist where the violinist has to sing while playing the violin. Oh wow! Yeah, and and there are many、okay. many other pieces, but of course, this is for the oboe and piano. All right. Uh, and what made you decide to learn to to take on this challenge of playing oboe and piano at the same time?、Uh, th- this this is a funny one.、Um, the the real reason is that I really liked the piece. The first time I heard it on a recording, I was completely stunned. I, I was I, I didn't know what I was getting myself into.、Uh, I was completely blown away by how emotional the music was, despite being so simple. Uh, there's of course a secondary reason, and that is that I I've never played piano in my life.、Um, that's also wrong, but I never took、yeah. lessons, piano lessons, as a kid. You know, if, if you、yeah. become a musician, you, you say I I want to go to a university or conservatory to study music. Of course, you can play the piano. I mean, everyone plays the piano from the age of three or four, but but I never had that opportunity <laughs> and. And so when I went to Kuala Lumpur to first start having real, very serious、uh, music lessons when I was、uh, 19 years old, I I had no idea how to play the piano, and so、mm-hmm. I was forced to、uh, take piano lessons,、uh, keyboard lessons, but、uh, I never developed that seriously. So eventually,、um, I I got. Some more six months of of piano lessons ten years ago, and then、um, I never played the piano again. So there was this desire in me to、uh, play the piano in public as a kind of test. <laughs> so this was the the perfect opportunity because the piano part is obviously not very difficult. So that is a good learning curve for me to 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 experiment, and and the piece is just perfect for that. Yeah. And very creative,、uh, the use of oboe for just one hand and the piano for just one hand. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to see Howard、uh, accompany himself、uh, in Luis Andriessen's "Forget Me Not," and this is the last piece on this program. Thank you so much for watching.
So that was Louis Andreessen's Forget Me Not for oboe and piano. What a cool piece, especially with those slides. So thank you so much, all of you, for joining us uh, today. And uh, because you were such a great audience and such a patient audience watching Howard struggle through all of that alone and all of those uh, contemporary music, uh, Howard actually has a nice little uh, encore for you today. Uh, but before we get to that, I would like to uh, just a, a, a couple public service announcements. Um, Ensemble Virama has something very exciting coming up for you in two weeks. So please watch this space. Also, if you enjoyed that just now, if you were inspired, if you learned something, please consider uh, supporting us, supporting Howard, buying him a coffee uh, by PayPaling him, and the details are at the Facebook event page. Now, Howard, let's talk about your little uh, your little encore that isn't uh, that that you're not alone for. Yes. So the, the entire recital is, of course, based on the idea of solitude and based on the, the idea that, of the breath, that, that it's, it's such a miraculous thing that we could make music with the breath. And you hear stories of, of people who get COVID and, and they are strapped onto a venti ventilator. I mean, that is such a, a scary and painful uh, experience. And so yeah. to be blessed with the ability to still make music with the breath, I think it's just a remarkable thing. And yeah. ending the concert, I, I, I performed Forget Me Not, which is really also trying to say, you know, um, people are alone, but, but please don't forget me, that, that I, I'm still here. And in my case, I'm, I'm we still We won't forget you, music. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> Especially after watching yeah. that that strange little thing, yeah, that strange, terrible uh, pianistic skills of mine. <laughs> so I thought it would be nice to give an encore where I'm not alone. So I got my, I, I roped my friend, uh, my dear friend who is now in Indonesia, Bagas Koro Sumiran. Uh, we all call him Bagas. I'm sure today's uh, audience would, some, some of our audience members would recognize Bagas and know Bagas personally. Bagas is this amazing uh, oboe player and a couple of weeks ago on Instagram we, we're always just teasing each other uh, with, with our Insta stories we would just throw shade at each other this is our relationship a little bit <laughs> so one day we just said hey why not we play something together and that was maybe three months ago and we both have a big love of orchestral music so there is this particular excerpt from Rachmaninoff's Symphonic Dancers that we liked, and, and it's a kind of duet, uh, per se. And so I got uh, Chao Jun Yen, another Malaysian composer, who is in fact the brother, the older brother of Jun Yin, oh. uh, who lives in, in Singapore, to make this uh, transcription for us uh, of this particular excerpt from the Symphonic Dances of Rachmaninoff for oboe and English horn. So we recorded this separately, and uh, earlier today, I, I patched it together. And if you have headphones on, you will hear uh, the oboe on one side and the English horn on the other side. Wow, cool. All right, yeah. thanks so much, Howard, for this uh, really awesome recital. I think I learned a lot. I, uh, and, and I think we were treated to music of uh, lots of different worlds, even though it was uh, all double read and a little bit of piano, but I think it was lots of different colors that we never get to hear. So thank you so much, Howard. Thank you all of you for joining us and uh, hope to see you in two weeks.